Hi, I'm Liz with the Missouri Star Quilt Company, and today I'm going to show you a riff on my first tutorial called Gifts of Love. That tutorial was a table runner, and it was a rectangle like many of our table runners and table toppers are. But like many of you, and many of you in the comments, we wanted to make something that was round for one of our round tables. So you can see on the wall behind me, we've hung up what we're calling gifts all around. And a simple change made this easy. So instead of a rectangle at the top of our gift, we're gonna use our half hexy template. Stick with me and I'll show you how it's done. So let's talk about what you'll need to make this project. I have used some Kona Sheen, which is this beautiful, shiny fabric. It has a little bit of bling to it, which I love. And that's gonna be my gift wrap. I've chosen three colors because there are six total gifts on the gifts all around. I'm gonna use each one twice, but you could do all six the same or all six completely different. It's also scrap friendly, so you can go to your stash or you can buy something new just for your person. So I'll need six 10 inch squares of various gift wrap. Then I'm gonna need bows and ribbons. I'll need five inch squares. I've again used the sheen, so it's a nice shiny white. And I will be using one inch strips for the ribbons and five inch squares for the bow. Then I'm going to use some background fabric. And I wanna show you the difference here. My original, I wanted to use a nice light gray, but I decided it didn't have quite enough contrast to show off the bows and ribbons. So what I'm gonna to use to show you this project today is a little bit darker. It's a solid Kona, and the description box below has all the supplies and all the colors that we've used today. You also need a nice sharp rotary cutter, your favorite marking tool, and I'm gonna use our 10 inch square for squaring everything up. Then last but not least, there's two more templates that come in very handy. We are going to use the half hexi template to make the top of our gifts and the space for our bow. So I will use that half hexi template. And then for the space between the gifts to turn this into a nice round topper, we're going to use the equilateral 60 degree triangle. So that does mean we're gonna use Y seams today. Y seams are gonna form here and here as we put the hexes and the triangles together. So when we put our triangles and our half hexes together, there will be Y seams. Don't let that scare you. I'm gonna show you how to make that really easy. It just takes a little bit of marking and patience and they will come together beautifully. When we're done, we'll have gifts all around. So the first thing we need to do is cut everything out. What we're gonna do is start with our gifts. They will be 10 inch squares to begin with. This is our gift wrap. So I have got 10 inch squares of the blue, the green, and I've already done my purple. And then I've sliced those in half so they're five by 10 inch rectangles. Then I need five inch squares for the bows. So I've cut a stack of those. I will also need eight of the background half hexes. So you can see they're just cut along the template. And then I will need six of the equilateral triangles. And we're just gonna cut them along the template full size. Then we also need one inch strip that's gonna be the ribbon. And then we're gonna cut that down. So you can cut it with the fabric and then cut that down. I need 10 inch pieces to become the ribbon on the gift wrap and then five inch pieces for the ribbon on the bow. Once you've got all of that cut, let me show you how to put the block together. Okay, so our gift block is made in two parts. So first is the wrapping paper and we're gonna add a ribbon to that. So I've taken that 10 inch square, split it in half into two five by 10 inch rectangles. I'm gonna add a strip that's one inch by 10 inches between them. So I'm gonna always sew with that strip on top. So I'm gonna put them right sides together and take that to the machine. And I'm just gonna stitch a quarter inch seam right down the side. Now if your quarter inch is a little generous or a little shy, no big deal, just make sure that it's consistent on the whole block. Got a little thread stuck, which I'm just gonna trim. Okay. Now to make the top 
and the bottom of the gift nest together nicely. I'm gonna flip over this block and show you what I did. On the gift wrap, I'm going to press towards the outside. So here, I will press away from the ribbon towards the gift wrap. And I'm gonna use my fingernail or the pad of my finger. If that's a noise you don't like, go for the pad of your finger or a roller. And we're just gonna press that away. Then we're gonna go ahead and put right sides together. All the shiny towards itself. And I'm gonna flip it so that the ribbon is on top again. So why do I flip it so the ribbon's on top? Well, I want it to go on the same way. So Jenny talks about sometimes that if you have a larger piece of fabric and you put it on the bottom, the feed dogs will, feed dogs, not feed ducks, the feed dogs will take it in. So what I wanna do is make sure my ribbon's on top both times because it's such a small strip of fabric, I don't want it to squash or squoosh in the wrong direction. So again, I'm going to go ahead, open this up and finger press away from the ribbon and then I can take it to my iron. And because it's shiny, shimmery fabric, I don't wanna leave the iron on too long. So that's why I also like to finger press first. And then I'll take it over here and I'll actually iron it from the back. Then I'll flip it over, make sure there's no folds. I can trim my threads and just give it a quick press. So that's my gift wrap section done. So I'm gonna set that aside. And now I'm gonna do the top. So instead of the rectangle, we have cut out our half hexes. Now I've got this folded. So I've got my half hexy folded in half and I've lined up all of my corners and creases. And you can even crease this with your iron if you like, but I'm just gonna slide my scissors into that fold and cut that in half. So now I've got two pieces here. I'm gonna need to put the ribbon between them, but I can't forget the bow. So what I'm going to do is take those five inch squares and I'm going to fold them wrong sides together into a big triangle. And I'm just gonna kind of finger press that for a second. And then I'm gonna fold this top corner down like so. So now I'm gonna hit this with a hot iron for just a second to give it a nice press to hold everything. Just real quick. And that one's gonna go right here. You can see on my finished block, I have part of the bow down and part of the bow up. So I'm gonna put this in here and just line it up. Do the same with my second triangle. Well, square. So I'm gonna fold it into a triangle with the right sides out, wrong sides together. Fold the top corner down. Give it a little quick press to hold all those creases in place. And then that's gonna go right here. It's okay if the point sticks up beyond the space. Okay? Awesome. Now we're gonna put this together. I can use a pin here and here to hold this in place, but I'm gonna live a little dangerously and I'm just going to place my ribbon over the top and I'm gonna stitch a quarter inch. Now, this is a place where your machine may try to grab this and eat it. So what I'm gonna do is flip it over so that it's going from the squarest side instead of a corner pointy side. Caught a thread, no big deal. Just trim that. Here we go. Okay. So you see, I'm also going to this time, because of the bulk of fabric, fold the ribbon in instead of away. So 
that's where it's going to want to go anyway because there are fewer seams that direction. Okay, so now I've finger pressed that and I'm going to place it on top of here. So I'm lining up my bow and then I'm going to flip this over and line up my ribbon. And I want the 90 degree corner down here to be the one that matches because we can trim away any extra at the top. So as long as that matches, I'm going to flip it over again and stitch on the gray side. A lot of quilting comes down to, it doesn't have to be exactly accurate to someone else, it just has to be consistent to you. So if you do the same thing every time, it'll all work out in the end. So we've got that, and again we want to press toward the ribbon, and they should somewhat come together without too much overlap. And what that does is it gives a little bit of a 3D look to this, but it also helps all those seams just kind of rest so you don't have a lot of bulk and bunching. So now we have the top of our gift and I can just trim off this little extra, which if I'm honest, means I think I cut my strip too big. Okay, so I have the top of the gift and the gift. So now we're gonna fold these two together and because we folded the top in and the bottom out, they're gonna nest together beautifully. So what that means is I'm gonna be able to fold this over and you can see I can use the ribbon seams here and I can feel that with my fingers, but I can also see it nesting really beautifully. And I can add a clip or a pin there, or I actually just find it really cathartic to hold it there. And I'm going to line up the top, and that's gonna enclose this seam as well. So remember, your bow's gotta be in there, lined up, and your top, and we're just gonna sew a quarter inch all the way down this side. And I'm just gonna worry about this first half and I'll reset this second half. So it's okay to me that it's flipping over here somewhere. I'm gonna start, once I get into that ribbon, I'll pause and reset for the second half. So I'm just gonna sew a quarter inch and pause there. Okay, so I'm somewhere in the middle, I'm gonna pause. And I'm going to flip these back and make sure they're lined up with my gift wrap. Like so. And I'll keep going. All right. Let's flip it open and see how we did. Let's see. And as you can see here, I'm going to press this away again because there's a bulk of seams right in this space here. So I'm going to push it away towards the gift wrap. So as I open it up, I'm just kind of finger press that a little bit. And as you can see, our ribbon lined up very nicely. So now we've added a bow to the top of our gift, and I'm just going to give that a quick press to set everything in place. Okay, so eagle-eyed viewers who have watched several of our tutorials are going to recognize this as the pinwheel, the 3D pinwheel that Misty made. So you can leave this a 3D element and especially if you're going to quilt this on your own, you can free motion quilt around this and have a lot of fun playing with this. If you're sending it to a long armor, I'm going to recommend that you go ahead and applique this down because that's going to help the long armor make sure that they don't catch that when they are stitching your whole project. So I'll show you real quick how we do that and it's just to stitch along the edges of our bow. And it's just inside and you can use just a straight stitch and then we're going to pivot and stitch right off the edge and then you can do that again. You can do that again along here and I then like to come back and do this piece here. So let me show you how that looks. I'm going to start by doing just the outsides of the bow. 
when I get to the corner, needle down and pivot. Okay. And that works great, but we still have these parts as 3D. So to fix those, I'm just gonna come down this side, right across there, and up this side. Okay. So you'll manage all your threads and you're gonna do this six times so you have six gifts. Once you have all six gifts, you're gonna come back and I will show you how to start putting them together with the triangles and the top half. Okay, I've got three gifts done. So with six total gifts, you're gonna do this in two halves. Three gifts on one side, three gifts on the other side and that leaves you a nice straight seam down the center to connect them. So let me show you how we're gonna put these three together. I'm gonna do purple, then green, no, purple, then blue, then green. So this part's easy. I'm gonna line up these two sides, just like I would line up any block. And I'm gonna stitch, but I'm gonna leave a quarter inch available on each side. That's how we do the Y seams. So what I'm gonna do is pull up my ruler this one will work. And I want to measure a quarter inch from both sides. So here, quarter inch is going to be right here. I'm going to just make a little mark here. And then same down here, I'm marking a quarter inch from the edge. So there's quarter inch and it's going to be right about there. And I'm going to sew between those two dots and that's it. I'm not going to sew off the edge. I'm not going to sew beforehand, just between the two dots. So I'm going to trim my threads away so they don't get in my way. And that's from me sewing down my 3D elements to do my long armor a favor later. And by the way, guys, this is a small project. You can totally free motion quilt this on your own. You can do this in any kind of quilting style, but I'm going to go ahead and use machine quilting at Missouri Star because it's handy for me. And small projects like this are really easy to do. So I'm going to stitch from dot to dot. So green's gonna go over here. And I'm actually even gonna start by putting my needle down at the dot. That way I'm not sewing beforehand or anything like that. I know exactly where I'm starting. And I'm gonna keep an eye on this dot. I'm gonna line everything up to keep an eye on this dot and I'm gonna stop right there. If I go past it, I'm actually gonna pick back to that spot. So I wanna stop right there at the corner. Okay, and that's it. So my final stitch is right in that spot. And I'm gonna do the same thing when I connect blue to green. So I'm gonna open this up and it's a little waggly, that's good. Do the same thing here. I'm gonna fold green over on top of blue. And I'm gonna line up that angle. And this is a great opportunity to show you what happens if. So I'm a little off there, that's okay. I'm gonna worry about the angles and let the presence separate a little bit. So I'm still gonna mark on green using my favorite tool, whatever that may be. It's gonna be inside your quilt, so it doesn't really matter. And all I'm doing here, guys, is lining this up. I'm kind of eyeballing the quarter inch from the edge because I can tell about how far that is on my ruler. But if you really wanted to, you could line up your quarter inch along the edge of your fabric, so you know it's absolutely perfect. And then a quarter inch from here happens to be right on that seam line, so make that dot. And then quarter inch up here is right there. So I'm make that dot so I can see it. Okay, so now I'm lining this up again. It kind of shifted on me. I want this corner to all line up. And 
I want this line to be pretty close. It's okay if you kind of shift this around. You want to make sure that you're going to have fabric there. So I'm going to show you I'm imperfect on my blue. That's okay. I'm just going to kind of line up my angle and line up my top and line up my gifts. You can see the gift seam is lining up and that way I know where to stop dot to dot. And again, I'm going to put that dot right where my needle is going to go down. Start with my needle down and so till I get to that dot. Oh, so too far. So that's great. I'm going to show you what to do. Remember, I threatened to pick it back out. That's exactly what we're going to do. I'm going to pull it back just a couple of stitches. Let me see where you can see this really nice and easy. So I sewed past my dot. So I'm just going to peel this back. And I can use a seam ripper. I'll just kind of peel it back. And now I've stopped the stitch right at the dot. Okay. So that's how we put those in and stitch them all together. Now we've got this really funky shape and it's fun. What we're going to do is add and fill in the blanks. We have a half hexi that's going to go up here and then we have two triangles that are going to go here and here. And then we will finish with one more triangle on one side and that's how we'll get the half. So to get started, I'm going to go ahead and start with the half hexi and then come back and do the triangles. So since we know where those dots are, what we're going to do is just make matching dots on the top here. So again, you can take your ruler and you can line up that quarter inch like so with the fabric. So you can see if I stop bumping it, it'll stay, stay still. And I'm going to put that in the quarter inch mark right there. And then up here, a quarter and a quarter. I'm going to put a dot right there. Okay. All right. We're going to flip it upside down. And we're going to line up. Make sure you can see. I'm going to line up this dot with these two dots. We're going to peel the two original dots apart and we're going to make the third dot join them. So the three friends come together and we hold that there and we are going to line up the top of this gift with the side of this hexi. We'll stitch across there, stopping at the dot with its friends and we will pivot and then we find the second pair of dots and our second dot and we'll join them together so those three friends can form a Y. So we'll stitch across there, we'll stop and pivot and then we will come across the last top of the gift with the side of the half hexi and that will join all the pieces together. So let me show you that at the machine. Now in case you're wondering, because we're going to form a big long straight side, this does not have to stop at a dot to begin with and end with. We're just going to sew right on and sew right off. So just like I said, and when I showed you on the side camera here, what we're going to do is sew and stop where the three friends come together at the Y seam and pivot. So that's just a quarter inch seam along the top of the gift and then we pause. And there's my dot, so I'm going to stop there. Okay, needle down there, and now I'm going to pivot. So I don't like to add a bunch of pins in here because I end up stabbing myself about eight times. So I'm just going to gently move this around. I can lift the presser foot with that needle down and pull everything where I need it to go. I've got a little thread caught under my foot. Seems to be a theme with me. Okay, so now I've got that dot 
and I'm going to match it up with its friends here. So we're going to stop and start at that dot. So now that is going to go across the top of this gift and stop at the dot. Let's see where that dot is. I'm just going to stop right there. And I can see it. I'm not sure if you can see it on camera, but I can see my mark. There we go. Okay, so one more time. I stop with the needle down. I'm going to pivot and kind of pull and shoosh everything around. I use a lot of sound effects when I sew. Tell me what your favorite sound effect is when you're sewing. Okay. Put my presser foot down again, and I'm just going to line this up here. And I'm just going to stitch across the top. And this time I can sew right off the edge. Okay. Let's see how we did. Moment of truth. Not too shabby. It's a little tiny bit of puckering. That's not a big deal. I'm going to show you how that we can kind of fold the seams and give ourselves some room here. So I'm going to start by finger pressing and I'm going to kind of judge the seams so that they pick a direction. They want to go away from the ribbons, so I'm going to try to let them do that as much as they can, but that creates a lot of bulk right here. So these I'm actually going to push away in the center blue gift. And that will help everything iron down. And there's a trick that Jenny showed me that I like, that you can snip a seam, not through the thread, but just to the thread. And that helps it change directions and lay down nicely. So I'm gonna do that here and here. I'm gonna just put them to the threads, but not through the threads, and that lets them go their different directions. So I'm gonna hit this with a hot steamy iron and it will lay down nice and flat. Okay. So we're halfway home. That's gonna work great, okay? So now we need to add the triangles. We're gonna use the same kind of method but we only have one Y seam instead of two. So we've already practiced this and done really well. Now we're gonna do the same with these triangles. What I'm gonna do is mark my triangle just like we did before with the quarter inch. And remember we stopped before at those dots. So that's gonna open up and let us pivot between the two seams. So what we're just gonna do is mark this about here, it's a quarter inch from either side. So it's not a quarter inch from the top so much, it's a quarter inch from either side, if you can see that. Okay, make that dot. And then just like before, he wants to hang out with his friends. Well, let's help them out. So we're going to line up that dot with those two that we can peel apart and we're just gonna sew a quarter inch down the side of the gift wrap. We'll pause there and pivot. And then when we pivot, we will sew this side to this gift wrap. And then we will be able to open it up and have a nice roundish kind of section. So I'm gonna do that machine, show you how that's done, and we'll come back when I have all those triangles on. Okay, so what I've done is do two halves. So I added one extra triangle to one side, and you can see I've still left that corner to the dot. And then I'm gonna do the same. So it's not quite a half, it's kind of a fun half shape. And I also wanted to point out that even those of us who do this all the time are gonna run into this sometimes. This gift is a little wonky in the corner. If this bothers you, you can go back and take out some of the threads in this seam and hit that corner again. 
it's not going to bother me enough to do so. Because I know that when it goes to my quilter, they're going to quilt that down and it's going to look just fine. And it's not going to make my dishes wobble. It's not going to make my glass tip over. It's going to be just fine. So I'm going to leave it. But if you do feel bothered by it, what you're going to do is come back to this corner and take out the seams for the triangle and you'll line those up again and just pivot on the corner of that seam. Okay, so that's how to troubleshoot the Y seams. Once you have this half and this half, you're gonna lay them together and you're still gonna have two Y seams, but otherwise this is one nice big flat straight seam. So you'll come up here, you'll match the dots on these two corners and your two triangles will fill out that space between and you'll have six gifts all around. So that's how to make our gifts all around roundish table topper. I say roundish because you'll also want to go ahead and quilt and bind and you'll notice that it has not quite a round edge. So you don't have to go for the full bias binding. You can and especially like a stripe binding would look super cool on this. But we just did a regular binding and we just stopped at each of the corners and pivoted and they will self miter just like your 90 degree. So this is how we make this project. I'm excited to see what you make. Tell me what kind of wrapping paper you choose and bows and backgrounds. I'd love to see what you make using the hashtag MSQC show and tell. So show me your gifts. Hi everybody, it's Jenny from the Missouri Star Quilt Company. We hope you enjoyed watching this video. If you aren't already part of the Missouri Star Quilt Company family, be sure to subscribe so you won't miss a thing. And if you click that bell, it'll notify you every time a new tutorial comes out. See you next Friday.